Good morning, good afternoon, whatever time it is, where you're from. How you guys doing? Thanks for tuning in. I am uh, just about to catch sunset here, but the weather's really nice, so I figured I would record a video for you guys. It's been a second. Uh, the topic of today's video is should you consider buying a Victory motorcycle uh, in 2023? Now, I think this kind of applies to more than just this particular bike and model. I think it's should you buy something that's basically discontinued? You know, what do you guys got to think about? Is it worth it? What are some of the problems you should expect, etc.? I'm going to do my best to make this as concise as I can because I could probably go on for quite a while. And uh, I'm going to go to my favorite, one of my favorite spots to ride to. Hopefully there's not enough traffic to where I can actually get there before the sun goes down. But I'm pretty close, so we'll see how that goes. So 2023, the Victory has been discontinued since 2017. Uh, so, you know, a lot of people would say that they don't want to buy a bike that's discontinued. That brand isn't around anymore. There's no support. There's no parts. There's no people that know about them anymore. It's hard to get them fixed. The overall knowledge on them, it's a dying breed, right? I would say to that, yes and no. So for me particularly, I knew I wanted this bike regardless of whether it was discontinued or not. This is one of my staple bikes I've always wanted. This orange highball. And I think they started this color in 2015. So for me, I had a three year span to pick from 15, 16, 17 until they stopped making them. And I got lucky enough to find a 17, which is the latest year that they made them, which is good because, you know, there's that 10 year law where basically you have to make parts for a vehicle 10 years after it's discontinued. So for me, I have until 2027 uh, before I have to start really worrying about whether or not I can get parts for this thing to maintain it. Now that does only apply to, you know, maintenance type stuff and replacement parts and warranty parts. It's not 10 years guaranteed for like aftermarket stuff. So something to, something to think about. And being that this bike was already discontinued for like four or five years when I bought it, I didn't know how difficult of a time I was going to have uh, finding parts, finding people to work on it and finding the things I wanted to do. So, but I knew I wanted the bike regardless and I didn't care. So little did I know that I was in for a little bit of a treat uh, to do all that stuff. So I'm going to do my best to share you guys with you guys my experience on that, things that you can kind of pay attention to and stuff you should or shouldn't be worried about. I've had this bike for a little over a year. I've driven it about 4,000 miles and I've done a decent amount of modifications to it in that small time frame uh, to where I, I would say that I'm not an expert, but I can definitely give you a good idea of what to expect moving forward if you're going to go ahead and purchase one of these bikes. So let's start with parts. Uh, first and foremost, I mean, I haven't had any difficulty getting parts really at all. I've had, uh, you know, oil change stuff and anything that's maintenance required stuff. I haven't had an issue getting. Oddly enough, the the hardest thing that I had a pr uh, like a thing finding was the white wall tires that are supposed to come on this bike. And I went ahead with all blacks and I don't regret it at all. I actually like the look of the black tires much better. So, but that was because of COVID stuff. I don't think that was because of, you know, tires are tires. So, but as far as the rest of the parts, I haven't had any issue finding anything as far as maintenance and spark plugs and brake pads and fork seals and stuff like that. So I wouldn't be scared of that part uh, in particular if it was if it was me doing it all over again. And uh, I would say you guys shouldn't be either. Oh man, this is one of those times where it's like, should I go all the way to the front? This is a relatively large gap. But see now it's turning green and uh, I don't know. So lane filtering just became legal in Arizona, small tangent. And it's pretty sketchy sometimes. I'll do it if there's like two or three or four cars and a really wide gap. But something like this gives me the heebie-jeebies. Because I don't want uh, anybody to smash into me or get pissed off and... It's just not worth it. So as long as I'm not going to get rear-ended and I'm sure of that, I'll usually just stay my place in line. Especially because this is not the skinniest bike in the world. Anyways, moving on. So uh, parts and accessories. I would not worry about that if it were me, guys. Buying this bike in 2023, I would absolutely still buy it. Even if you got like a, a 2012 model, meaning that your parts are up in 2022, I still would. I, I don't think you're going to have a problem finding the uh, replacement parts for it. Especially because Victory kept their motors and all their parts the same for basically like from 2010 on. So you're, you're going to be fine. Now aftermarket stuff is a different story. 
you know if you're looking for exhaust and intakes and timing wheels and stuff like that that's no guarantee and I personally I bought all that stuff pretty quick and I didn't have any problem getting it I bought a timing wheel orange spark plug wires cold air intake Trask 2 into 1 exhaust Dynajet Power Commander 5 and I didn't have any problems at all getting that stuff I wasn't on a waiting list I did nothing so as far as engine modifications there seems to be a good amount of it out there still so that wouldn't throw me off either if it were if it were me buying again so parts and accessories at least right now I wouldn't worry about it I would still definitely buy anything from 2012 up whether it's the highball the judge the octane the um, cross-country anything because they're all the same motor one of the reasons I wanted this bike as well uh, is because they are all the same motorcycle basically just different frames now the second thing you got to think about and this is the thing that will get people and it did almost get me uh, in a couple spots as well so although you don't have a hard time getting parts you might have a hard time with finding people to install the parts you might have a hard time finding people that will work on these or that know what they're doing on these particular bikes um, which I had a little bit of a hard time with not too too much I'm pretty savvy when it comes to this kind of stuff so I wasn't too worried about it but for example getting this bike tuned I'm not a tuner so before I even bought the parts for this thing I called around to see if I could find a tuner who would tune the bike with the parts that I had on it once I found somebody which wasn't too difficult honestly within probably three or four tries I found somebody local to me in Phoenix who would tune uh, any any 106 victory who had done it before with good results and uh, after I got that and I knew they were a good company I went ahead and purchased all the parts because I knew I was gonna be able to tune the bike so something to think of uh, for you guys don't necessarily just go crazy buying parts that are going to require somebody's attention that's outside of your scope and you can't find somebody to do it so the other thing I found is when I started to did uh, when I did start to have a couple of small issues with this bike I was not sure where to take it because the dealer like right now the worst dealership on the entire face of the fucking earth they wouldn't help me they said oh like that's a specialty brand it was a used bike like we don't know we don't know what it is we don't know how to fix it we won't touch it all that stuff so I was a little bit disheartened for a second there because my problems that I was having which are the only two problems that I've seen with any victory on like all the forums and everything is my O2 sensor light uh, was going off my check engine light because of the O2 sensors and my motor was ticking really loud for a little while for whatever reason and I was really worried about it now I got lucky and I found a victory mechanic that's in the in the valley as well and I literally rolled into this guy's shop and he had like six or seven highballs sitting in the shop ready to be worked on so I knew he knew what he was doing I pulled the bike in and I asked him about it and he put my mind at ease right away these are notorious for O2 sensor problems but they don't mean anything they're just finicky so you can either disconnect them or get a dongle to replace them or fool them if it's a 2015 and below you can just cut one of the wires or just unplug them I think now if it's a 17 or a 16 it's a little bit harder because their O2 sensors are more sophisticated and they actually talk to the motor so you have to get a dongle uh, to f you know fool the computer which you can get I think at like victoryonly.com I have a set but I haven't put them in anyways so the ticking in these motors is due to using the incorrect oil which I'm sure they just put you know when Vic uh, when ride now got it I'm sure they just put whatever oil they wanted into it and I would say I, I got maybe a thousand miles out of it before it started ticking real bad and I pulled it around to the mechanic and he took one listen to it and was like oh yeah like that's that's because you got the wrong oil in it you need to get the victory oil specifically which he had on the shelf in stock so he sold me victory oil oil filter all that and within like 15 25 miles the ticking immediately went away so it's just something to think about um, but I never would have known that I didn't find any information about it on the internet I had some you know old timer who knew what he was talking about and was able to give me the answer I wanted so now if you're somebody who does not work on their own stuff you don't like to work on bikes you have no desire to wrench you know then I would that's something that could be a drawback for you uh, you know you might be able to get these aftermarket parts but like even with the tuner shop that I went to they said they would tune the bike but they would not install any part on the bike 
So I had to bring them the bike with everything installed and running for them to tune it, which uh, for me wasn't really a big deal. I like to do that stuff, but not everybody does. So if you're somebody who doesn't like to work on bikes and stuff, then I would consider doing some homework preemptively before you're gonna buy this bike uh, or this brand. And that kind of goes for anything, honestly. If you're gonna get an old CB750 that's quadruple carbureted and you're thinking about buying one and you don't know a lot about those bikes, try to find some sort of a resource near you or a shop that will work on them before you even buy the bike. That way you know you have a support system for not if, but when things go wrong and when you have problems, you have somewhere to go rather than just being SOL. So parts, knowledgeability, those are really the only two things you need to worry about when it comes to buying something that's not around anymore. The other thing you can think about is reliability, right? So, and that's gonna vary machine to machine, but for this brand in particular, they're not known to have a lot of problems. The motors only have like, I think nine total gaskets in the entire motor, whereas your typical Harley has like over 40 or 50. So there's not a lot of opportunities for this thing to leak or to fail. If you guys have never been here before and you're in the Phoenix area, definitely take a drive up here. It's pretty cool. There's all sorts of stuff to do. There's uh, definitely been some construction since I've been here last. But uh, hopefully all the roads are open all the way there. We can go all the way up to those towers and see a decent sunset. Ooh. But yeah, I would definitely still buy this bike in 2023. Long story short. Sorry for my rant. Oh God, I hope they didn't put... Those speed bumps were never there before. I bet you they put a bunch of them in here. Um, so that's kind of really my, my, two, my two cents on that topic, guys. I, I don't be scared to buy something that's out of production. Don't be scared to buy something that's old. If you do your homework beforehand and don't do an impulse buy, you can avoid all the heartache afterwards. If you're in an area where there's no victory anything at all and you don't know how to work on bikes and stuff and you're worried about it, then maybe just don't, don't buy one, you know? Go buy something that you know people can work on. That's one of the benefits of Harley, in my opinion. I mean, yeah, they're not, they're not the greatest, fastest bike out there, but there's like a a full-fledged dealer like literally in every way every town every city everywhere so pretty much whatever problem you're having you're at least guaranteed that there's somebody in the area who knows how to fix it who knows what they're talking about but aside from that i wouldn't be scared of it they're great bikes and uh, i intend on keeping on this one for a very long time so I'm gonna you know, do a little bit of due diligence and stockpile on some parts in advance. Spark plugs, brake pads, fork seals, anything I feel like is gonna fail, while well, I can find it, might as well get it and you know, keep it around, so. We made it. See if I can't get a good photo. Ooh. 
All right. Well, there it is, guys. The top of the radio tower. I'm going to sit up here for a little bit and uh, ride down probably when the sun goes down. If you made it this far in the video, I sure appreciate it. It's probably longer than I wanted it to be. But thanks for tuning in. Drop a comment down below. I love talking to you guys. Share this with somebody if you like it. And uh, ride safe. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.